Hey everyone, Last of Us 2 is finally out, or Last of Us Part 2, I guess. So a few things to just establish before we start. Uh, so one thing, if you are just joining us here and somehow missed The Last of Us until now, you can watch in the playlist in the description my playthrough of the first game in the DLC. You're going to want to get caught up on the DLC before, you, I mean on the story before you jump into the second part of said story. Straightforward. The other thing is uh, I am making a point to pre-record this entire playthrough before a single episode of it airs because uh, things have gotten toxic. I can't I can't, I can't even say really that they got toxic. Uh, people have been mad at this game for about two years now. Like, from the first trailer, people were immediately on this big campaign against this game. And then in recent months, there was a leak that revealed the entire story, which I have not read. But it became like a popular shitty thing to do to like spoil the, the game for people and just throw things in their faces and so on. So be warned. I'm intentionally pre-recording the entire game before a single episode goes up so no one can respond to episode one by immediately trying to spoil the whole thing for me because those kinds of people definitely exist. Uh, there will be a zero tolerance policy for spoilers where anyone who posts spoilers in the comments will be immediately shadow banned when I find them. No warnings, no talking back and forth, no strike system. Like You will be immediately banned from the channel. Uh, for posting spoilers in the comments of this playthrough or any other playthrough about this game uh, But and, and like I'll be I'll be safe to moderate it because I will have already finished the game But uh, you know enter the comment section at your own risk because I can't moderate it literally all the time So uh, if you're gonna leave a comment just go down to the little comments thing and just type a comment and send it and then just don't scroll to the actual comments because there's always the chance that they'll be full of spoilers because people are just very like they decided in advance to be very angry at this game and at the time i'm recording this the game just came out and it's already gotten like thousands of negative user reviews even though the game is like more than a day long so they couldn't have possibly played the game but you know it's just there's a campaign like people are weirdly motivated to just hate this today and all right and I, i'm not saying it's perfect or flawless and not, that, that nothing could be wrong with the game but i mean like people were definitely there's a lot there's definitely a contingent of the internet that had decided to be mad well before this game came out as shown by all those like two-year-old videos they're like why you shouldn't buy the last of us and stuff like that when it was literally just a trailer at that point but anyway, I loved Last of Us Part 1. I had a great time. I think the gameplay loop's pretty neat, but I also thought the characterization and the storytelling was fantastic in a way that, like, Naughty Dog's uh, Uncharted series never quite super appealed to me. But uh, getting to the chance to play The Last of Us, like, I, it's it really clicked. So I was excited to see them do more like that. But, um, I, but like, admittedly, I second-guessed the idea of making a sequel because that game... Is such a it's like if you if you were to think about it like a, as like a movie, it's such a self-contained story with such a clean ending that the idea of following up on it definitely gives me pause. So I'm definitely a little apprehensive, and I hope it works out. But I don't know. I've avoided as many spoilers as possible, and I'm going to. Like Jet Force Gemini is still airing. That's how long ago I'm recording this because I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to record it as fast as possible at launch damn the schedule uh so that i can try to get this without spoilers because like this is one of the very few AAA games that comes out that i'm actually like genuinely curious and interested in whereas otherwise it's mostly just kind of like huh whatever more of the same usually so i'm open for the best and uh if you're along for that ride and hoping for the best too then let's let's go text to speech ah uh. no definitely not ah <laughs> okay Yes, I would like English and English. Good. Good. Subtitles. Story dialogue, story and combat dialogue. Sure, why not? I don't think I need... Wow, this is a lot of... PS4 games over the years, have started to have incredibly comprehensive menu options. Like, border, like it feels like I'm playing a PC game all of a sudden, which is impressive. C consoles, I'm used to opening up a menu and seeing, like, three menu options, and I'm like, that's... 
disappointing. There we go. Sorry if my exact audio settings don't match your exact audio settings, but I'm playing with headphones, so it seems like I should play the headphones mode. That seems logical to me. It's reminiscent of the first game start menu where it was just that like that mossy window. I thought the cutscene had started. <laughs> A balanced experience versus hard. And it was more dangerous. Generally speaking, it always seems like you should be playing Last of Us on hard mode. Like, at least, I think this was the recommendation I encountered in the last game, was that, like, usually the standard difficulty is a little too easy for the survival horror aspect of, like, actually having to think about your resources and having a proper risk-reward. But supposedly Survivor is, just, is too far and too tedious, and it's kind of a, a, an achievement challenge mode as opposed to a proper thing. So I, I think I'm going to go with hard. And... and Yes, always invert Y. But hey, if it's not working out, I can always change it. But let's let's do this. Reminiscent once again. I remember last time it was, the, it was the, especially if you were installing the game, you had to, on the PS3, you had to wait for it to install for an eternity while uh, spores came out of the right side of the screen. Now we have green moths. I don't know if that has plot significance yet, though. Like if the moths are a problem this time around, or if it's just, they just wanted to have a different thing. Fireflies and walk away. You go halfway across the country with someone. She needed her immunity to mean something. Maybe I was starting to buy into that old cure business. Maybe I just wanted to do right by her. And then we made it. We found the firefly. Because of her, they were actually going to make a cure. The only catch. This is our future. Think of all the lives we'll save. Jesus Christ, Joel. What do you do? I saved her.
Wilson. <laughs> That's a lot. What does Ellie know? I told her they just ran some tests. <laughs> I told her her immunity meant nothing. And she believed you? I didn't say otherwise. <laughs> we should head back. Ooh, that does not look like head, head clearance. Oh yeah, he had to duck. Well, we're back. And we're immediately dealing with the ramifications of what was one of the better endings a game's ever had. And they're acknowledging that that look was intentional, that one, that... Where Ellie seems to choose to believe Joel, or play along with Joel, more so than actually genuinely think he's telling the truth because they sit they leave it open he says didn't say otherwise I guess Joel would have to confer and confide in someone sooner or later so now Tommy knows Joel could have saved the world. They made you feel that ending too. It wasn't a cutscene. Joel shoots the, the uh, doctors to save Ellie, but you have to do it yourself. I kind of rebelled it against it back in like 2013 kind of recoiled at being forced to be complicit in the choice. But I've kind of turned around on it over the years. When is now? He doesn't look much older. This might be the same year? Joel's done a lot, but this might be a choice that breaks him. He's had a lot of those, actually. talking about earlier. I can't say I'd have done different. I'll take it to the grave if I have to.
I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. We're all damned. And yet the choice makes sense. Not like cold calculus, but it makes sense. Heart attack. I tried knocking, but hey, hey, what's up, Joel? Just checking in. Folks are, you know, talking about how impressed they are with you and how well you're helping out. Yeah. Tommy and I went out riding the other day and he uh <laughs> he told me a joke and I I thought about you. It's um Oh shoot, now I forgot it. Uh something about a clock. How do you Joel, it's uh it's pretty late and I gotta Get up in a few hours. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. I'm, I'm gonna get out of your hair. I just, um... I, I want to show you something. Just give me one second. What's this? Um, some folks call this thing here a guitar. Funny. You want to hear something? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Promise me that you won't laugh. I won't laugh. I won't. I'm trusting you. Hello. Well, that 
didn't suck. <laughs> I'll take what I can get. She's yours. No. No, 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 no. I don't know the first thing I about this. I promise that I teach you how to play. You did. So what do you say, tomorrow night, first lesson? Remember the joke? Um, what is the downside to eating a clock? It's time consuming. <laughs> That's so dumb. <laughs> Joel's reliving his dream of being able to tell dad jokes as a dad. Oh, I, oh, I'm really worried about that. Starting the game by having one character give another character a meaningful gift. I immediately think something's happening to a character or the gift. Oh. Sorry, I totally overslept. Just give me a minute and I'll get dressed. I heard you had quite a night after I left. I... She kissed me. It was just Dina being Dina. She didn't mean anything by it. I was talking about your fight with Seth. Wait. You kissed Dina? Oh. I thought this... We're broken up one week and you make a move on my girl? No. She was probably just trying to make you jealous. I didn't... I would never... Oh, fuck. This is awkward. I'm messing with you, man. I don't care. Get dressed. You're the worst. That's kind of fucked up you did that. <laughs> Get your stuff together. We're already late. All right. Jesse's fun. Oh, we have the same poster. It smells fine. Wait, there's the... Oh, there's the same room. Okay, I just hadn't seen this area as much. Sorry, it's my first chance to walk around a little bit. There's the guitar. So we still have that. Okay, this is the same room then. A different time of year though, because the snow's around and my face definitely... Like, that was a great transition where we saw her face change to update as she aged. So now, we've, like, I think we had a little bit of a time skip, maybe a year the first time, but now we're, like, significant later on. And we've got new characters to meet. So tired. She's got a PlayStation 3. <laughs> she has a PlayStation 3 with Jack and Daxter. Of course. Of course she does. What's up there? That is way too many copies of Cursed Grave. You don't need that many copies of Cursed Grave. Oh, wait. No, it's a series. They're numbered. My bad. So the guitar has survived a time skip. Beatrix Walters. Before 7 a.m. I wonder if you, if you wait long enough if the time will change. Like if it gets if it's that detailed. Oh. That's probably the girl we just heard about. In that yep, in that photo right there. Cause that's me and the guy I was just talking to, Jesse. She still like and she still likes her comics. She's doing sketches of characters. Blazing Bliss. Media is one of the only connections she has to the world before. 
I'd have to wash their clothes like this. A washboard. I have never used one. But it's worth remembering that Ellie doesn't remember the world before the apocalypse. I don't remember if she was born after it or if she was just too young. But she was... She doesn't remember the original world, so her only connection to what came before is the media that survived. And so she really connects to these features. Like, she always she collects these posters, like punk rock and superheroes, and tries to get any comics and CDs she can, because it's the only chance she'll have to see anything from before. Hey, she has some tabletop games. Supernova Odyssey. I wonder if that's like Twilight Imperium or something. Just because Odyssey implies very long ga game. Oh, there's more comics. Yep, she's still collecting. Yeah. It's a little, <laughs> there's a little arcade cabinet down there. Painting palettes. Hey, is Joel up? We got reports of infected out north. We sent him to tell me out earlier to scout. That sucks. Yep. Can't imagine they got much sleep. Definitely not as much as you. Shut up. I was just about to get up. I was. You got everything? <sighs> yes. Joel has also survived the time skip. Heads up. You're the talk of the town this morning. <sighs> what? Let me see if I got this right. You kissed Dina. <sighs> she kissed me. Which triggered Seth to call you a not-so-nice word. Yep. Then Joel decked him. More of a push. And then you got mad at Joel. That part confused me. It was a strange night, man. Sounds exciting. Maria wants a word with you. Where is she? The diner. Is this about Seth? No clue. to carry her out of it. Just tell her you never saw me. Nope. Where's your fucking loyalty? Excuse me? I love the logistics here. They've got greenhouses set up so they can farm through the winter. Hey, so... We're okay, right? You and me? Yeah, of course. Dina and I are done. I know, I just... I want you to think... Ellie, we're cool. I love that settlements in this universe are large enough that they feel believable. With like adequate space dedicated to like food production and so on. As opposed to Fallout. Hey! Hey, old timer. Yeah, get a good scratch. Hey there. Look at all this. Oh, hi. That's just how girls are. They're reading into it. Now compare this to like Megaton. And you're like, how is anyone alive here? <laughs> the tipsy bias and that I think that takes a large amount of alcohol. Wanna grab some breakfast? No. Where's Maria? In the back. Excuse me. Ellie. There you are. Come here. Seth's got something he wants to say to you. I don't want to hear what that bigot has to say. Do it for me. Please. <sighs> Fine. Seth. Seth, come here. Hey. Uh, 
Look, last night I was, uh, I was drinking too much. Sure. I'm trying to say I'm sorry. Maria tells me that you and Dean are headed out. I, uh, made you some sandwiches. Okay. Or steak. Thank you, Seth. Yeah, well, uh, you be safe out there. Yep. I appreciate that. What you got there? Bigot sandwiches. Mmm. Smells good. They're yours. You sure? It's fine. Let me walk you out. Okay. I wonder how old Ellie was when she first encountered the bigotry of the old world. When you go out, I want you to trade off with Tommy and Joel. Those boys have been up for far too long. Where do I meet them? If you go up to the Northwest Lookout, they're scheduled to arrive later today. But watch yourself. I mean, there's too many sightings of infected recently. Of course. I was gonna check out the creek trails. I'll need someone else to cover it. Ellie, you know the creek trails? Not really. Dean has done it a bunch. I'll have the two of them take it. Come here. Well, that solves that. What's depressing is thinking she might have got this far without even encountering it until now. A new experience being judged like that. So, look, I don't know what's going on with you and Joel. <sighs> Maria. Guy really cares about you. And I'm sure he didn't mean to. We're fine. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry to cry. Be safe. Thanks. Yo, Dina! Assignments! <clears throat> Just give me a minute! We get your girlfriend to the stables, please. Oh, my God. Hey, Dina! Can I talk to you? <laughs> hey, guys! I'm tapping out! Come on! For how long? Whew. Hey, hey. Um, I just want to say sorry for running off last night. Oh, that's, it's okay. I totally get it. I, <laughs> I just, I felt bad. Why? Because I started the whole thing and I just, I shouldn't have kissed you in front of all of those people. And no, you were drunk, that's fine. Well, still, I just, I don't want you to think. No, I'm not reading into it or anything. Just, you know what I love about you? How you let me finish my sentences. All right. Well, we should probably get going. Yeah. Ow! What the fuck? I'm not even playing! Because you're a chicken? You're a chicken! <laughs> I hate this kid so much. You want to fuck him up? <laughs> yeah, I do. You asked for it. You better run, you little shits. Holy <laughs> shit. Get to cover. Go, go. Tutorial time. <laughs> gotcha. That was crouch. There's a crouch. There you go. There you go. Oh, oh, I'm coming for you, ah, shit. I got it. Always on that kid. This is like a thing Naughty Dog does now, isn't it? They have like play fighting as the tutorial for fighting, which is actually a pretty decent way to set that up. Fuck yeah! I mean, frick. Like you wanna you wanna have like children or frivolity or like a little hint of society in your game, but you wanna but you also wanna do your tutorial, do them at the same time. Play with kids, but also learn the the combat. It's kind of a neat idea. It's also fucking distressing. It is it is like horrific as a concept to some extent because you're thinking about like wow. It, it it's kind of like what this these kinds of games served a purpose for in society to some extent. It was like you were it's like when uh, people talk about like like dogs and wolves play fighting instead of real fighting and like they can always tell the difference between play 
and fighting, but at the same time, like, the play fighting kind of... Ah, I'm, just, I'm getting destroyed by these children. The play fighting kind of helps the, the wolves, like, prepare for actual danger scenarios. Oh, what a shot! Come on! And, like, these kids, these kids are all gonna grow up to have really hard lives. Oh, shit! <laughs> That was incredibly fair. You ran right up to me. How's it feel? No, get her! You'll never get away with it. See, that's the no fair. Get off of your monsters! All right, all right. We actually have some work to do. Oh man! I guess I asked for that, huh? Yep. Yep. They all dove. They all dove on her and piled on in a way that simulates distressingly. uh how a lot of the people in the settlement die. So, Jesse wants us to do the creek trails. He's gonna relieve Joel and Tommy. Oh, that's nice he assigned us together. You're gonna like this route. Morning, girls. Morning. Jackson Ranch. Hey, ladies. I'll bring him in. Thank you. Not the worst place to pause so I can comment on this, because every time I move, dialogue happens. Unless it's about to happen again anyway. The, uh... I was thinking about why there's so much LGBT representation in sci-fi settings and then also in like zombie settings and so on, like apocalypse scenarios. And something that highlights this idea is like one of the reasons why this stuff is often so repressed and so looked down on and why that still keeps happening despite many of us feeling like we've moved on and like it shouldn't be a problem anymore, but of course it is, is this element of like it's it's the systems. It's the it's the older generation and the systems that they put in place. And like bigotry itself is generally syst systemic. That's why people say like, you know, systemic racism and so on. Like it's beyond just bad apples and individuals acting poorly. Like th th it's a mistake to think of it as just like a bunch of individuals making bad choices and having bad thoughts. Like it's an entire society around them that pushes back against these kinds of people and so on. And so sci-fi, of course, like a Star Trek type scenario, like you're in a completely different world. So cut and dry, you can just create things from whole cloth and aspire for a better setting. But at the same time, you have like in The Walking Dead and in here, you have LGBT representation showing up more and more like in The Walking Dead comic and the show and in here because all the rules, like the whole, the system collapsed. Everything is gone. So the reasons for hiding are gone, essentially. And you can, like, there's, there's a chance for a reset, which is interesting. In fact, that's actually the Walking Dead comic, which is now over, specifically ended on that kind of hopeful note of the question of like, wait, when people, how do I put this? When you, have a zombie society, everyone just wants to go back to the way things were, which is a very relatable feeling because the apocalypse scenario is so bad. But Walking Dead had the very interesting conclusion of ending on the question of, wait, when we rebuild, don't we have the responsibility to rebuild something? We don't want to just rebuild, we want to build something better than what came before. This is your chance for a reset. And so that's that's just, I don't know, I love watching these different franchises explore exactly that question, like the aspirational note of all this. And uh, in Ellie's case, uh, you have this conflict where you have somebody who lived in the old world. Like, we know that Joel lived in the old world because of his age, and that guy was even older than him, pretty clearly. So... He come, bring, comes into all, all these bigotries and these these issues that he needs to work out. But Ellie was born in the New World, and so, in kind of a heartbreaking way, she has to be taught that the bigotry even exists in the first place. Because, left to their own devices, like, homosexuality 
just exists and always has existed and it's always been a percentage of the population and so on and you know uh gender and sexuality are both on to some extent like spectrums and it's all a big complicated discussion but he comes from a shittier world essentially like not in the zombie way like they had a nice beautiful lack of zombies but that doesn't mean that the the world he came from was perfect and a lot of the systems and assumptions and the way that people were treated were horribly flawed and to some extent the fight for survival kind of like evens the playing field and kind of irons out a lot of those concepts and there's just for a while there when everyone's just running to fighting to survive like you just can't think about those kinds of things because it, 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 what's like day-to-day -day survival is just far too important so you can't like dwell on these bigotries or even think about them and so on so it's it's now when like a decade has like decades have passed and you have ellie here who doesn't know the old world uh who is now growing up and becoming of age and going through her teenage years and so on and she's learning th things about herself but also these people that have managed to live from the old world through the apocalypse and now into this sort of later stage where things are kind of building themselves back up and like like we have a like we have a society here that looks a lot like later arcs of the walking dead comic where you have like the ranches and the horses and like the like people have systems and everything for picking this all back together and like suddenly people are bringing their preconceptions from the old world back and there's this distressing element of like she has to be taught that there's people that will judge her for reasons that are incredibly difficult to actually explain because their reasons never really made sense. Anyway, buckle up guys. Here comes The Last of Us 2. See you next time.